Why'd you stop? Don't and stop. I just wanna tell you how I feel. I'm pretty sure everything's been said. Someone else come around, my brain go dead. Rushing in familiar territory, leaving things unread. It's your girl K.E. The girl Consuela. Woo! It's another week, baby. Another week of we ain't got it yet and you done did what? Pulled, Pulled up, up on us. us. Love to see you. And uh, quite frankly, I know you like to see us. They do. <laughs> got to. You keep coming back. Keep coming, bike. Keep coming back. What we got for him today? <sighs> today we're going to get into a little bit, you know, just unpacking stuff. You know, we're going to let y'all in on our lives. A little bit of our lives. A little bit of little our bit. lives. Just our upbringing, you know, where we come from. I feel like in order for you to progress yourself, you have to start focusing on, like, where you've been and where you want to go. Right. I think lots of us stay in where we've been. Because it's easy, it's comfortable, it's what we know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think but we... we shouldn't be like that. We want to address where we've been today. But we also going to talk about where we go in the future, but we want to set a, a, a foundation for you to figure out why we do this, mm-hmm. for one, and then for you to be able to reflect on your own life and... And, you know, find some gratitude for the things that you've been through and to create a vision for yourself if you don't already have one. Right. So with that being said, um, of course, like our parents play large roles in our lives. Um, but other aside from parents, who would you say is like um, one, two, maybe three of the most influential people or organizations or whatever has been the most influential for you in your life? Um, I talk about some of them all the time. Um, I've already discussed in the past, uh, Pastor Mike is very big, very influential in my life and where I've uh, come and where I'm, where I'm going to continue to go. Uh, my uncle Gerald, I didn't talk about him a lot. Uh, he gave me my very first job. I worked two years for him at the city of Monticello. If everybody knows my uncle Gerald, he's love. You know, he's everything he does is for the community, it's for the kids, it's for the people at the church. He's a very selfless man. He reminds me so much of my mom, and he's mm-hmm. taught me so much. Um, I called him before I called my dad. Uh, I couldn't get my lawnmower to start <laughs> a couple weeks ago. And the first thing I said, man, I'm going to call my Uncle Drill. He can tell me what's up. And when I called him, he stopped everything he was doing, and he walked me through, and he told me what to need to do. Like, he's when I say my Uncle Drill, he's not even really my uncle. You never, no. No. <laughs> Everybody call him Uncle Gerald, but he's not really my uncle. But he's he feels more of an uncle to me than some people who really is my uncle, mm-hmm. you know, which is odd. And then I have a like my aunt Susu, and I call her my aunt, but she really my first cousin. You know, in the south where you be like it's my aunt and my aunt. Yeah. And I'm like, That's, I grew up with her kids, <laughs> you know. So she, I call her my aunt, but she has done lots for me. You know, I just had to reflect on that the other day. Like this lady has really, she very selfless. She she has. Done so much for me, but the way she shows up for me, out of sight of not doing things for me. For instance, one of my friends needed some, and I said, oh, my auntie is great. Like, I think she may be able to help us. So I was able to put her in contact with my aunt, and my aunt was like, oh, no, nah, I ain't, you know, it's good. I ain't got, you ain't got to do all that because you're Aaron's friend. No. Just to be able to bless other people because she loves me so much. I, I owe those three people outside of my mom, like, lots. When I make it. I'm going to continue to, like, say, hey, they was part of that. What about you? Uh, for me, of course, yeah, I always mention my granny out here. My granny, that's, like, my bestie for the resty. I yeah. love my granny. Like, I can talk to my granny about anything. She, uh, I almost said she ain't going to judge me, <laughs> but she old school. So. She probably is. She going to have you a little something. about that outfit you got on, probably. I'm sorry, granny. <laughs> <laughs> But no, but my granny, she don't, she just old. I mean, she's 85. So she gonna speak her mind. And it's not necessarily her being judgmental, but she just don't hold she don't hold her tongue. She not gonna and I love that about her so much. Um and she just always been there. Like, I just love my granny. Um, the second person would probably be Brittany Washington. Shout out to Brittany. I didn't know um, y'all had a, a, a close relationship. Talk yeah, to me. so we didn't of course, I've always known her f- from church, but when she started her Made Perfect brand and wanted me to be a part of that and it's kind of sort of, I guess, the face of it, um, we grew closer. Um, and then when I went to, like, Woman Evolve last year, we grew even closer then. Like, we've 
it's been years, like, through her. It started with the Made Perfect, and so we kept in contact frequently. And it's not like we don't talk every day. We don't even talk every week. But when we do talk, it's – ooh, I speak. When we do th- talk, it's like time hasn't passed. And she's always been there to encourage me. She's always – any anything – that I've brought to her like a dream or something that I wanted to do. She's always been very supportive of it. Um, she check in on me. I check in on her. Like she's really like a big sister, a mentor, like all the all the things. Um, and she's like not. She's never judgmental about anything that I bring to her. And we've had some open and deep conversations too. And so I just love you, girl. Thank you for mm-hmm. always being there. Um, and then the third person, this was well, really a family, a, a person and a family um, combined. And I guess a place. Um, and this just recently happened within the last year and a half, two years that I've been going to Mercy and Grace, the church. So anybody that follows me pro- on Facebook probably always see Beverly. Y'all see Mama Bev. The, the 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 obviously Mama Bev and Pops, the white lady, the white man. That we always, they are really like another set of parents, and she's really like you know a lot of people say like that's like a mom to me or a dad to me, and they just throw that out there. But she's really is like another mom to me. Like she looked out, she still looking out. She looks out for me. She called me. She check on me. I go over there. I sit and talk to them. Um, we have dinner sometimes. Like we go out to eat at the church. And even just the pastor at that church and their whole family, because they like a close knit family, and they always looking out for me. Like they always there. Um, just and although it, they're connected to my my occupation, even outside of that, like they just care for me as a person. When I'm not at church, they text and like, you okay? You good? We missed you. Um, they know I'm away from home. So, like, Easter, I didn't go home for Easter. I spent my Easter with them. Um, I spent Thanksgiving with them the uh, year before last. Like, their they're, the Bilderbeck family, is they're great people. Like, um, even if we have disagreements or whatever, it's like, talk about it, love you, go on. It's just, it's, yeah. that's, that's like a, another family and so I really appreciate them they they help me in a lot especially on my spiritual journey because I ain't, we ain't got it yet but I do want to be better and I'm trying to be better and they have a they've played a big role in that spiritual journey with, with yeah. me so yeah I um I think it's extremely important for us to have families outside of our family mm-hmm. like especially with you being you you as you were talking um, I was listening, and then it, it, you start triggering other memories for me for people who have made. They've. I'm 29, yeah. and I'm still in my upbringing process, you know. And I think that's a part of the platform too. We ain't got it yet. We're still trying to get it. But what you said about their family and who they've been to you and how they make you feel loved. You're like 400 miles away from home, you know. You're in a space where you completely. Being able to go to somebody's house and feel loved and feel accepted and people to check in on you, that's like everything when you're in a different city. Mm-hmm. And I can say that because I've lived in lots of cities. Yeah. You it know? be different when you like don't got no... I mean, I have my cousin, yeah. but I don't see him. You know, that's... Yeah. It's just different when you have like older people, you know? Right. Like parent figures right. and stuff like that. So, yeah. Right. Mine... Um, Several families that I want to, like, shout out. <laughs> um, Renata and Mark, when I worked at Conway Public Schools, um, I, it's funny, I met them because their son was in my class, and it was during the year of COVID, and well, the COVID year, when we came back, and we had to sit six feet apart and all this stuff. Well, they decided to keep their kid at home, and he wasn't doing his health homework. I remember sending that email, like, ah, bro, for the fail. <laughs> you know, shake back type stuff. And she reached out to me. She's like, well, I don't need to see who this lady is. I ain't never heard of no Coach Campbell. And she said she went and seen my, my face on the website. And then she talked to me, and she called, and she came up to visit. And it was like instantly we all clicked. Mm-hmm. Her husband called me and check on me. I call and check on them. Um, I go to their son's games. It's like part of my family now. Uh, my my family asked about them, my you know. Friend. Uh, in the space that I just uh, took another job at, the job that I'm on now, my school don't be alarmed. (laughs) 
the job that I, I'm on now, um, one of the coaches that I work with, I, I say that, but it's like really a really close friend now. We've gotten really, really cool. And her family like invited me over for dinner and like, hey, on Easter, I went and ate with them. I didn't have to go all the way home. I was welcome into another family. And I, I, when you said that, that really touched me. And I'm glad that you got that because I, I have had the opportunity to do that at every city. That's how me and Kayla got so cool. Mm. I was on staff. Her wife at the time was on the staff. And I would literally be at that house all the time, like being able to have that connection. I feel like I feed off of that energy with people. So I'm glad you really got that, friend. And it's crazy because I don't even think, Sometimes other people don't really know what they mean to you. They, they do have not. No, they just be in themselves. Yeah. And they have no no clue. They have no clue at all. And, I, and I'm, I'm, again, I'm grateful that you have that, especially along your spiritual journey, because we ain't got it, but we going to get try. it. And we try. Um, shout out to them, man. So with that kind of shifting into, like, you know, this being our about our backgrounds, our upbringings, like, what was your childhood like? That made me think about Medea. What was your childhood like? What was your childhood like? <laughs> um, my childhood was great. Now, when I say great, not in the essence that you think. Um, my mom was a single mom. I, I come from poverty. Uh, when I grew up, we were we lived in, and mom, I'm finna tell it, you know. Uh, we grew up in a trailer, and the trailer was like 16, 17, 18 years old, even at that time. And... We had, like, holes in the floor, you know, during the wintertime. I had to get, like, in a big T-shirt and sit on the vent and, and put my, my my legs in it just to get warm. Uh, if you've ever lived in the trailer, you know what that looks like. Uh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's wild. All right, that was a big uh, one. That was a big one. Uh, <laughs> the AC having the window unit. You don't know nothing about nothing if you ain't never had no window unit AC, bro. I ain't always had AC where you just go punch the number <laughs> in, but we ain't always had that, man. Of being in the heat of summer and being that mother sweating. I didn't, man, my mom is the GOAT. Can't nobody tell me nothing about Kathy Campbell, bro, and that's on my soul. Shout out to you, Miss Kathy. Man, my mom was so solid. And then, like, okay, she had a job where now, like, one of her best friends ended up passing, so she moved into her position at the job where she was, like, staying, living with the uh, client because my mom take care of mentally um, ill, mentally ill, mentally challenged uh, people. So, uh, and they've, been, they've become, like, part of our family. They've been part of my upbringing. Like, me being able to see my mom care for people in so many different elements of life has been so crazy. So that was, like, I got my first room in the sixth grade. I slept with my mom until I was in the sixth grade, bro. Dead serious. For real? Dead serious, man. I used to. That's why I'm a big baby now. <laughs> you know, cuddle me. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm a big baby now. I come from a very different space. My mom was like, she's like a hero to me just because of the things that I done seen that lady do. And, and the person, she's so selfless. My mom right now, if I ask her, like, mom, what you want? She can't tell me what she want. She don't want nothing. She don't want nothing at all. She want me to be successful. She want my sister to have shit. She want the grandkids to be great. She want her brothers and sisters to be good. All she do is care for other people. So when I say, like, my upbringing, like, my experience with my childhood was, like, I was broke. We ain't had no money. But I never knew that. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I I didn't know folks was poor. <laughs> I ain't miss no meals. Look right. at me. Right. <laughs> hey, if you watching the podcast on YouTube, baby, he ain't never missed a meal. Kathy made ends me all the time. And then, like, Christmas was great for me. Mm-hmm. My mom was going to make sure her kids had a great Christmas. Christmas was amazing for me every year. And then tax return, I was getting some stuff. <laughs> Man, my mom was going, that was like, because it always, like, around Valentine's Day is when, like, she would, like, do additional gifts. But I ain't even know back then it was during, like, tax season. Mm-hmm. You know, me and my dad relationship, it wasn't the best then. My parents divorced, and we can get into, like, divorces and stuff later. But he was, like, he was there. My dad was there. He would come pick me up, take me, like, to, to movies, take me out to eat. He tried to spend time with me and be the best dad he know he could. But, like, when I say Kathy was the GOAT, man, everything I am is because of that lady. I love that for you. Yeah. What was your upbringing like? What was your childhood like? Um. As far as, like, having stuff, we was 
we was pretty spoiled. I mean, I don't come from like then my parents weren't like rich or anything like that, but my grandparents did a lot for us. Um and then my dad, he's a very hard worker. He always had a job. My mom was a stay at home mom for like on and off. She'd work on and off, but for a lot of like when I was younger, from what I can remember, she was stay at home and then like we moved from Vegas to Arkansas when I was like kindergarten. Um and so, I mean, we've always li- I've lived in a in a nice house with just me and my sister. We lived in a nice house. I was had a two parent household until about thirteen, um, and my parents divorced. But I, what you're expressing, like I wanted that from my mom. Like it's not my mom loved me. Don't get me wrong; she loved yeah. her kids. Like, and I love my mom, and she. Every day we can, had home cooked meal for the most part, like, but but that intimacy, like that it, relationship, yeah. Like, I, but I got we got that from my dad. Like he would always be at the schools. Um, Valentine's Day, he was bringing us stuff for Valentine's Day. Um, for Christmas, that usually, I mean, we got stuff from our parents, but most most of it was like from my grandparents, my granddad and my my grandma. My granddad lives in Vegas. My grandma lives in Warren. So they that they, they were a, a large. They played a big part in that. Um, but like I remember, not so much like as a kid because as a kid, like I mean, I'm, we we had what we wanted. We were spoiled kids, but like as I was getting older, um, like into my teen years. I didn't have like that. Come talk to your mama about anything, and I always wanted that. Oh, I wanted it so bad. Like, and it's like I I could do that with my dad, but I didn't want to. Like yeah. your first time having sex or yeah. boys, and you yeah. don't really want to talk to your dad. I mean, you can, but that's yeah. not something you want to talk to your dad about. So um, I didn't have that. In other other like some of my friends did have it so like i would talk to some of my friends moms yeah. or this is making me emotional Don't yeah it's okay. it's okay um or i would talk to other ladies um like miss deidre at church but i always wanted that shout out to miss deidre yeah i always yeah. wanted that relationship with my mom and I, I it's better it's getting better the older i get but I wanted it then, like when I needed it, yeah. um, and I didn't. I didn't really have it. And it's not to say, and I, like I said, I love my mom, but I just she did the best she could, like with what, what she, she knew, knew to do, yeah. Like what she knew, and I don't really. I just recently talked to my dad, probably maybe like sometime last year, about his upbringing, like in detail, and what he came from, and what his childhood was like, and so it helped me understand him a little better and why he is the way he is or why he does certain things that he does and things like that. I've never really had that conversation with my mom, so I really don't know. We've talked here and there, but I really don't know in depth. So, I, like I said, I just think she did the best that she could and what she knew to do. And then, like, the other part of it, it was just church. Anybody that knows my mama, they know, like, yeah. Miss Ruby That's is where I met Ms. Ruby. Yeah. <laughs> deep into church. She and don't so, shout. Right. Shout, run, all the things. <laughs> and she's very, any, I've never met anyone that had anything negative to say about my mom. Like, everyone always say, Miss Ruby is so sweet. She's the sweetest lady. She's so sweet. And she is. But for me, like, being in the house with, like, how she is to other people with, yeah. like, God and she's like that at home too. Like, and so it made it hard for me to talk about certain things or things that I wanted to express because I want to talk to you as my mom, not right. as not. I don't want to get a Bible. Not lesson. as a member from the church, right? I don't yeah. want to get a Bible lesson every time I come to you about something. I want to get a real life lesson from my mom or just confide in my mom about stuff. And I just did it, yeah, because that's what it would turn into. And it's just like. Nothing against Jesus, because as you know, we love Jesus here on this Amen. platform. Like we, yeah. I, I, I teach me the way, you know. But at the same time, like be my mom. Right. So, right, that was kind of like a big thing. But I know you mentioned divorce, and we both come from divorced parents. Yeah, you know, so. I, I said my mom was a single mom. Uh, my parents divorced 
I want to say in like 99 or 2000, I was like four or five years oh, old. Oh, you were young, yeah. You know, I was a baby baby. You know, I remember my dad being there. Mm-hmm. Uh, one just little jokey joke because I want to make you feel better. <laughs> uh, my dad, I remember this one time, my, 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 my mom was doing my sister's hair. And um, I was sitting and I was watching her do that. And we living in this trailer, right? And my dad was over on the couch like sleep or laying down or something. And I'm like, I've always been an inquisitive child. And as I'm, as I'm looking at everybody, I'm like, I don't know how old I was at this time, but I had to been under the age of four and five because this is before they got divorced. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at my mom. My mom's light. She's brighter skin tone. <laughs> um, my sister's darker skin tone. Um, my sister and my dad are like similar color. And I'm like in between my mom, like, like a little bit tone, like darker than my mom. Yeah. And I'm like starting to understand colors. Oh, and I'm gosh. like, so you know, I'm on their top. <laughs> I said, I'm looking at everybody, I'm looking at my dad. I said, Mom, what color is dad? My mama messy. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep you the bug. Kathy messy. You got it on us. Yeah, yeah, she messy. <laughs> she said, ask him. So she I wake him up. <laughs> I wake him up. Dad, daddy, what what color are you? He say, I'm black, your mama black, your sister black, and you black. We all black. Everybody black. I'm black and I'm brown. <laughs> and here I go. No. I'm brown. Mama brown. Camille say she brown, so you the only one that's black. <laughs> so with that being said, like that's the only real like memory I have of like my family being together. My dad, you know, he did what he did. Do you have step parents I, or mom? First of all, dad? my dad's wife. Uh, That's <laughs> being clear. Same. My dad's <laughs> wife. Uh, she's she's cool. You know, my little sister is great. I love her to death, man. I probably could be a better sister. I try to be there. I try to go to her events, but I'm always I'm like super busy. So like I I don't do the best that I could. I have an older brother. Like all my siblings, it's my brother. Seven years away from him is my sister. Seven years away from her is me. And then my little sister's like. 13, 12, 13 years younger than, younger than me. So um, I grew up just completely different, and I never had, I don't, I have a relationship with my brother, but it could be better. I have a relationship with my sister, and I grew up with her. We had the same dad and mom, and our relationship, it's up and down, like, all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, my relationship with my dad, it's just, my dad was an educator. You know, he was an edu- educator, he was a coach. Uh, he was always busy so uh, you doing that. I did, but it wasn't because of him. I was about to say, was it purpose or no? <laughs> uh, it wasn't really because of him. My mom was my coach in every single sport I played. Softball, she coached a little bit in baseball because uh, I left softball and went to baseball. Uh, basketball, she was my coach. My mom was at every single game. She's not missing no game. My dad, not so much until, like, I think he he, he really jumped on when he thought we was for the win the state championship. Oh, you know, he would come around. He he would come to the home games when he could, but it was like my dad prioritized work. You know, I, I remember graduating from law school, and I asked my dad, was he coming? He was like, no, nah, I got to work. Real deal. That broke my heart. I ain't lying, that broke my heart. But you know who was there? Miss Kathy. <laughs> my best friends came. Um, they pulled up. Pastor Mike came. Now, now I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Pastor Mike pulled up. He was not missing that graduation. Pastor Mike pulled up all the way to Phoenix. Uh, he, I remember him. What y'all like? What y'all want to eat? We gonna go eat. And he paid like my mom. My mom brought my niece and nephews out there, which was really great because they got to see a different world. Um, my best friends was there. Pastor Mike paid for everybody food at the table. Solid. I keep telling y'all the man <laughs> solid, man. That's and I don't why he getting under the at man the is crazy. <laughs> That's why he getting under at the cookout. The man crazy. But like I like my entire life has just been my bring up my upbringing is different, which is why we can't we want to like hash this stuff out with y'all because you got to start looking at like where you've been, try to figure out what why do you do the things you do. Mm-hmm. Why are you, you who don't you realize are? It yeah, until, you don't see the connection. Later. And I, that's been a thing with me. Like my parents divorced when I was thirteen. Um, my sister was like six because it's, let me see, I got an older brother. I don't even know how, he's probably like 32. Why? I didn't know that. Yeah, my dad. So. I thought you, I know you got a younger brother though. 
I ain't never knew you had an older one. So yeah. my dad, there's Ronnie Jr. Um, and then he got my mom. He had me and Riri. Me and Riri six years apart. And then I have a little brother. Me and him are twenty years apart. Okay. So it's it's all of us. I don't really talk to my older brother like like a, it could be better. Yeah. Um, my younger brother, we kind of I when he was a baby and we, I was closer down there. He used to always I remember come that. He I was with me all the yeah. time. People thought that. that was my kid. Um, <laughs> no, did they did think that? <laughs> but it's not. Um. And so now that I'm moved farther away, like we FaceTime and talk or I try to show up for birthdays, holidays, stuff like that. But, um, yeah, so they, they were divorcing. I seen, like, my mom had, like, food stamps and, like, when they divorced. And, but it still wasn't, I don't really consider it a struggle. So I don't even want to put that out there. Like, I, because yeah. my grandparents always made sure me and Riri were good. Like, we yeah. just... And Riri ended up even living with my grandma as time went by. But when you said what you said about well, talking about you don't realize there were traits from both of my parents that I, not until I got older, that I started realizing, like, I need to change that. I don't like that. But there were also great traits that I took away from the both of them. Um because even though my parents divorced, my dad was he's still always been he coming on this all, <laughs> every all the time. Shout out to <laughs> hey, shout out to you, boss man. I want you to let you know we talk about it every time you post. It's really appreciative and what what you're doing, like showing up and support for your daughter as well as me. Because you know, claim me at this point. <laughs> uh, we really appreciate that. I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. no, it's fine. Shout out to because my my auntie, she like my family in general. They for the most part they support all of this. Like, um, but. There were also good traits. Like I can say, my family is a very forgiving family, and I—that's a curse and a blessing. yeah. What do you when you say that? What do you mean? They just, and I think part of it stems from so whenever, and I think I mentioned this before, and it may seem small, but it's—I promise it carried us over. So whenever me and my sister got into it. My mama will always be like, y'all need to be nice to each other because y'all all each other got. Because, like, it's just me and her. Like, we we close to our little brother, but at the time, like, he wasn't born yet. We're not close to our older brother. We grew up in the house together. Same mom, same dad. So whenever something happened, she would be like, you need to apologize and ask for forgiveness. Like, it wasn't just a, I'm sorry. It's, do you forgive me? And my mom, whenever she would do something that wasn't right or um, that she felt wasn't cool she'll be like mama sorry y'all forgive me y'all forgive me and so that carried over to like I don't have a problem you know a lot of people have a problem apologizing and me when they wrong I don't have a problem doing that um and even like situations where stuff was happening in their marriage they they were forgive now I'm not telling nobody to be dumb for love but it was just, and it may not even been anything super drastic. Um, sometimes it was, sometimes it wasn't. But the forgiveness was there, like, and I that carried over to me. And it's just like I'm a very forgiving person, and sometimes in situations where I definitely should not be, yeah. like the situation with the 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 guy and yeah. all the stuff I went with that. A lot of people would be like, why are you even still cool with this person? Yeah. Like, why do you even give him the time of day? Like, you should have nothing. But I just, I don't really, I don't really hold grudges. And I got that from, that's one thing that I I love about myself, but I also hate it because I'm just now getting to the point where I'm able to stand on business and be like, okay. You Set boundaries this, for yeah, yourself. Yeah, you did this, yeah. and I forgive you, but you can't come back to my space. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that I, like I said, I, I got from my parents and my upbringing was that forgivingness, that forgive, forgiving people, having a big. Because my mom, she went through a tough time with some stuff that happened, and she's she forgave people that. I don't know. I don't know if they deserve the forgiveness. I'm gonna keep it a bug. Right. Everybody, everybody, and I want to say as a child of God, everybody deserves forgiveness. 
Uh, forgiveness is for you as well, so you can move on. But that that is that's I feel that. And I never really. She never complained. She never talked bad about. Not in my presence. I don't. But I never heard her say. I, so to my knowledge, she never talked bad. She never tried to get get back or none of that. And I that too. I feel like is why I'm a strong individual. And I, there were things that I went that now on the flip side, there were things that I went through and I experienced where I needed certain adults that claimed that they cared for me to be there and they failed me. Yeah. Like people that I really needed and expected to like, because I, I was a, a kid, uh, well, uh, 13, you're, you're still a kid. Like, and I needed, Certain people and certain times I needed my mom. I needed those people and they just. To protect you. Kind of yeah. brushed over things and looked over it and just kind of acted as if certain stuff never happened or certain things were never said. And I I can admit that I need to go to therapy. I think I'm just a little scared too because a lot of stuff from my childhood, my teen years, it's, it affects me to this day. But I just try to like push it back yeah. and not let it bother me or try to act like it never happened and never existed and never things weren't said, things weren't done. But um yeah, so but it's just crazy because people people saw me and they saw Riri and they saw us like have the nice things and go places and go to Vegas for the summers and come back and I, I me get cars and have just never going without, but they didn't see like the behind the scenes. Yeah. So on the outside, you like, oh, they got this perfect life, but that's not always. A, don't judge a book by its cover. Like you, you saw that, but you didn't see the back part yeah. of it, the back yeah. end of it. And I, and that's the thing too. We think because we see people, they have material things, or that you know, people are present. It doesn't mean that the support is the way it should be mm-hmm. or the experience is what you think it is. You know, um, I really appreciate you for one. I hate to see you cry. Right. Y'all and, got me over here like. Uh. And two, I'm really glad that you like willing to share yourself so much, so intimately with the people as well as myself, because I feel like I'm learning a lot about you right now, too. But all of us are experiencing things that. Are affecting us every day. Every day, you know, and I and I and I'm gonna pray for you, and I hope that you find the strength to Thank go you to, me. you know, right a therapist. Because once you start to, you begin to unpack that, you can be able to make the appropriate strides in your life towards your vision. You know what God's your purpose. Yeah, uh, what God has for you is is your purpose, and be able to guide you to the next thing. But pushing it back, it's essentially not going to do a lot for you. I think that. May- why I'm so emotional too because I just hold so much like I've yeah. got so much in that I've never ever really just been able to fully yeah. let out yeah. um, because for a long time I was a people pleaser Yeah, I didn't want to make anybody upset my parents like friends anybody um, but those though it wasn't always bad like we we had family time we prayed as a family every morning um game nights it wasn't like I just had a horrible home life at home but things definitely could have been different yeah. but that also helps me um look at my legacy and how I want to parent and my kids what to do and what not to do Amen. and how to be as a mom going forward like yeah. so um how, how about you like um I would definitely say that uh, one thing I can't say is I was raised in love, yeah. and I I see why that's so important. Not just for me, but before every relationship I come in contact with, mm-hmm. the jobs that I work, being raised in love is an extremely important part of that process of being a good human being. Yeah, um, being able to work with other people because you you are loving. You are. An individual who are who's okay with change, like you're receptive to people being different because you know how to love. Uh, people who are raised out of survival are extremely selfish. Um, I am grateful for 
the people who've been put around <laughs> me because I want my legacy to be um, love, guidance. Mm-hmm. Um, I want it to be success. I want it to be wealth. And I want it to be um, leadership. I want my legacy to be when people hear my name. I want it to be, damn, Aaron Campbell. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I want the essence of not just, like, popularity. Mm-hmm. That ain't what I'm interested in. I ain't never cared about that. Everything that I do, I really be in the background of. I don't even, want, I don't even be on pictures. Popularity don't always come with. Yeah. It ain't all I ain't interested. <laughs> I ain't interested. But when you hear my name, I want it to be about we got it because X, Y, and Z, and mm-hmm. Aaron was involved in that. Yep. You know, I, I think... The way that I told, I said before that my two nephews live with me, mm-hmm. and I and, and the reason they live with me because one, my sister love her kids; she can have her own kids if she wanted to. But I think I love in such a way that it's so receptive to them. They're able to have access to the things that they desire. I am very empowering. I try to show them the world. I try to get them the things that I didn't have because, like I said, my dad was a coach. You definitely man, lead by example because I've seen you in I, in go mode, parent mode. <laughs> You're you you're doing a great I'm, I'm job. I'm tough. Appreciate that. I'm tough, but it's because I know it's what it's required for them to be young black men out in the world and what it. And I ain't never been no man. Ain't never gonna be no man. But I I love black men and I want them to Me too. be loved. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to be loved and I want them to get the things that they need to be successful. Yeah. And um, I think that's like where my upbringing has has transformed into me. I'm I'm very similar to my mom. I'm a giver. So what's your relationship like now? How is that like? With my mom? Well, I know you close with your mom, but I guess more so with your dad. With that, since my dad, cool. Is I, it better I can call or him. the same? Or? Um, I don't know if I said this earlier, but my dad is an educator. He's more like my principal than he mm-hmm. is my dad sometimes. Uh, I mentioned like pulling up and trying to, you know, use the the trying to figure out what was going on with my with my lawnmower. That's another story for another day. <laughs> Uh, I am the provider at my home, so I got to yeah. do provider things, you know. And I called my uncle. Uh, my uncle didn't answer at first, so I called my dad. He didn't answer. So my uncle ended up calling me back, and he gave me all the details that I needed. And then my dad called me back, and in essence, he was like, um, what's up? Like, what's, what, what's going on? He just wanted to have a regular conversation. But then I was like, nah, that's all good. You know, I just was trying to get my mom more fixed. I, I, but I talked to my uncle. It's all good. He, no, 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 what's going on? What's wrong? And he wants to be that, you know, and I don't know if he ever really had a space for that. Yeah. You know, I have to try to see things from his perspective, too. Mm-hmm. Marriage is hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, okay. but marriage is hard. So I can imagine, like, the things that he may have experienced, things he's going through. He didn't have a dad growing up. So mm-hmm. I'd be having to understand things while also standing on business about what I want and what I desire for myself, but trying to provide a space where he can be a great dad. Yeah. And I don't know if my dad feel comfortable, like, trying to do certain things. Like, I feel like a lot of times when I talk to him and we're talking about sports, uh, we're checking in on family and stuff like that. But I feel like, you know, it's be sports, education, job, and it's, it's like he's my principal. Yeah, I feel that because it's like my mom is my principal, but in a spiritual sense. Because She's everything your like we t- we was on the phone the other day and she was just talking talking like about the Bible and I was like mom okay I got that. mommy well y'all know me I say mommy but yeah. I'm like mommy okay and she's like okay okay and I, I I don't I don't she don't mean no harm it's just like I said she do, she's doing done the best that she could um, but as I like I said as I've gotten older that relationship with my mom is is slowly getting better and. Also, with my sister being about to have a baby, that's kind of helping too. <laughs> like, this kind of making her a little so, bit soft. She's gonna be yeah. completely different with that grandbaby than she was with you. Whew. Yeah. So, that's that's. Wait, us. wait, 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 wait. Before we get into the end of the episode, I want to say this too because I know we got to get out of here. But um, one thing I want to point out because we talked a lot about, about our parents, our upbringing. There's so much more to that that we didn't even cover. We don't have time today. Maybe we'll put out a part two episode in the future. But one thing I want you to understand, because my best friend said it to me before, and I just, it completely changed my view on the world, which is why I'm able to see different perspectives now. When your parents were raising you, they were also in their upbringing. Your parents, our parents, what we don't understand is they were growing too. 
Imagine being twenty five. Because my mama had me when she was thirty two, and we my mama had me when she was thirty five. So. I mean, didn't Kayla just sit on the podcast <laughs> and say she 30, 30, whatever? Yeah. And she couldn't imagine having a 16 year old or right, something like right, that. Like, yeah. you got a point. Um, they, still they just, they still growing, growing into themselves. Like, we mm-hmm. almost 30 and we ain't got it yet. Right. And I don't know if that's I'm going to have it in five years. Like, God's going, my timing is going to be God's timing. I don't mm-hmm. know what that's going to look like, but I'll be having to remember that our parents were raising, they were, they were being raised. Right. They were, they were in their becoming phases and they didn't make, perfect decisions you know and 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 not to excuse them from accountability but right. being able to say oh man I, I really appreciate you doing the best that you could with what you had because I know I did I, I spoke very highly of my mom I love my mom to death everybody in the community love my mom my mom my friends can call my mom and ask them my mom and keep their kids can I come over there Miss Kathy like and wash clothes Miss Kathy can you give me a ride somewhere like my mom is that person for so many people and she was that for me too but I think that I think she could have been better. I remember I remember going through like the period phase. I didn't want to talk to Kathy about that. <laughs> yeah, um, that that phase for me was kind of. I mean, my mom was there, but it wasn't. I don't know. I just learned from things that happened in my life how, how I want to be as a mom. Yeah, and how to. Yeah, facts, know. facts. But I just want to make sure that everybody thinking about that. You got to think about the space have where they grace. are and where, where they were when they right. did that that goofy stuff. <laughs> Have grace really for your parents. Say something. Have grace for them. But our, okay. so I guess our our we ain't got it yet. Point would be to just be better than what you know. Be better than what you know. Be better. Facts. Than what be you better know. than what you know. Um, and then even if it's good, be even better than that. Provide be provide a legacy that is, whew, this 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 way better than what your ancestors could ever imagine. And be grateful for where you are because people work hard to provide for you. Regardless if you think that they did the, the best they could, it could have been better. They done what they did. Right. Yeah. That was good. We were very open. Emotional. And emotional. Like, I'm pretty crying. I'm pretty crying. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, so it's time for our ick. You, you go know? first. No, okay. you go first. I go first okay. all the time. <laughs> my ick is... Um, People that talk down on others, and I feel like this is the mo- first of all, that's the most normal. Ick I feel like I done had this whole time. Yeah, you be wilding. <laughs> um, but I feel like even that comes from my upbringing because, I mean, I'm not Beyonce. I'm not the finest, but I ain't the ugliest either. And so you ain't growing, that friend. <laughs> growing up, me and my sister, we we knew we were pretty girls, but my mom always taught us to never think that you better than nobody else. Like, just because you pretty, so what? Like, yeah, you pretty, but so what? You never put, don't think that you just got it like that and you all that. And so I don't, that learning that and being taught that, um, of course, be confident, but just never think you're better because you, you know, we know better than the next person. And so I just really don't like when people, like, talk down on people in a sense of, like, I'm better than you. Because of X, Y, and Z. I really don't like that. That is an ick of mine. I do not like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm completely in agreement. I'm trying to think of how to expound on that, but you said it all. Like, I just, what the, What did you talk about? What? <laughs> I feel like all of us, especially being a Christian, I may be better than you in essence in this space, but right. How? what do God think? Right. What makes that's me what we overall always, generally better hey, person than you? That's what, what? we got to get back to. What do God think? That's the only opinion that even matter. Mm-hmm. Okay. My ick, um, and o- a person who always correcting people, why does it matter that they said the word wrong? You know what they meant. <laughs> why does it matter that they spelled it wrong? Unless it's like for, it, for real, like something. You coming from a genuine yeah. place trying to help them. No, I don't even say that. If, it ain't, if we in text messages, oh. why are you... <laughs> And I got a homeboy to do it. It'd be funny when he do it because I know he really just kidding and playing. But people who do it really seriously. do it serious, that's that's weird to me. It's weird vibes. And that goes back to, like, you think you're better than somebody. Right. You knew what that person was saying. They didn't say it perfectly. Cool. You want to listen and move on because that ain't even the topic. then when they try to do it in front of people to embarrass yes, you? Yes. A real weird flex. Ooh. All right. Here we go. Mm. One, two, one, two, three. Weekly he. Weekly he. All right. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode because we've really, really laid out stuff on the line, trying to help you get it, sharing 
things with you that you may be experiencing or, you know, just revisiting our childhood and trying to figure out where our habits are coming from and how you got to address that before we can get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Today's weekly heat, hurt, struggle, sorrow, pain, all the things that, you know, keep you up at night in the depths of your soul. Okay. That teaches you things that happiness could never. Okay, um, and when I say that, happiness, you feel that when you're at the top of the mountain. We all want to get to the top of the mountain. Mm-hmm. But before you get to the top of the mountain, there's going to be some valleys that you got to learn how to pass through. Mm-hmm. Um, God is my shepherd, I shall not want. Hey. You know, <laughs> um, it's going to teach you some things you could have never gotten when you were at your best. It's going to teach you some things um, that you would have never seen had you not experienced that pain, some things you're going to feel had you not uh, been cut off, had you not been treated badly. And I'm not saying that um, that's good. Right. I know that it's it's tough, it's hard, but it's going to teach you some things that you really need along your journey, um, and which is some of the things that we've shared today, just touching mm-hmm. the surface with you. You know, we really, we really hope that you you're able to recollect for yourself in the comments. If you would like to share any details, we'd like to hear more about your upbringing and your journey and how you're transforming that for yourself too. And if you have like questions or stories or anything, don't forget to email us. Uh, was it host host h o s t s at we ain't got it yet dot com. Yeah, just email that stuff to us and have those conversations. And I'm speaking to myself too. I have conversations that I probably need to have with each one of my parents individually to just talk about stuff, stuff that's right. bothering me. Just have those conversations. With your loved ones, be better than what you know. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, and we will see y'all next week. I be if I don't get it for my children's children, and that's real. One that feels like what are you real tight till midnight? Tell me how you miss free throws, that's free points on the field. Think about it as a